Oh man, so Joe Budden has been rolling out his interview with Dr. Umar and boy, that thing has been content gold. Now every single day is a new clip going viral and it's crazy as hell, it's funny as hell for me seeing the different reactions to everything that Dr. Umar has been saying. Now, we're going to check out some reactions, I'm going to give y'all some of my commentary, a little bit of everything, but let's get right into it. Now the first clip that went viral is when he called out Ish for dating a white chick. Listen to this real quick. Our manager that he hired to come in here and clean this motherfucking apartment. Joe might not know who the fuck cleans this apartment. Something just hit me. Shoot. Are you mixed race? No. Or you a bunny hopper? Yes. Per, per your, oh, that's why that's you have true. a liberal that's perspective. That's not true. That's not Because you go home that's to a not white true. woman. Yes, but that's not true. I felt this way before I met my white girlfriend. So help me understand how you could be so passionate about the black I'm not. I'm not. The, pa I'm passionate. I'm, I'm, I'm an objective thinker. I don't. If something makes sense. So you have me, no loyalty to the black community. No, I do have. I probably employ more blacks than you. Okay. So help me understand that you employ more blacks than me, but you go home to a white woman. Why you don't have a black woman? Because I fell in love with a white woman. Not a black why didn't you fall in love with a black I woman? I did. I fell in love with a black woman. We broke up. Okay. And why didn't you find it fall in love with another black woman? I did that too. We broke up. Okay. Oh, and why didn't you get another one and another one and another one until you found the right one? Because I, I met a white woman that I fell in love with, and that's the person that and I you're being today. disingenuous about that's something. Not true. And let me tell you what you're being true. disingenuous about. True. Romance mm -hmm. is a function of focus and opportunity. If I want to date an Asian, I'm going to put myself around Asian women True. so I can find one. True. If I want to date a Latino, I'm going to put myself around Latino women mm -hmm. so I can date one. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to marry a black woman, you would have put yourself around black women so you can find one. So how did you end up with the Caucasian? No disrespect to her. No, not at all. What I'm telling you is the places that I go socially are not just mon mon mono. Monolithic. So what? Like, I went I'm to a white college, whoa, whoa, whoa. white college, white college, I'm white job. Answer. I never bunny hopped. Listen to my question. Let me answer you. That wasn't my priority. My priority wasn't, yo, I'm not closed off to dating Latino women. I'm not closed off to dating Asian women. I'm not closed off to dating white women. So again, in my search for romance, all of those things were on the but table But you do me. understand that by not being I mean, with a black I'm, woman, I'm you undermine That's your the opinion. success of the black community. That's your opinion. That's my opinion. Then tell me how the black community benefits from you having a white woman. If, if, I, if I lend to the financial up, up, uh, uplifting. uplifting of that community, one, that's one thing. Two, if I'm helping to educate the people in that particular community, th that's a benefit. Three. Does not your white woman benefit more from your economics than any black person? Yeah, probably. Exactly. So, so why can't they both be mutually beneficial? You, you want to know why? Because she belongs to the group that is responsible for the historical oppression of your race. So, so why would you voluntarily go over and marry into that? Because when you marry the woman, whoa, whoa, whoa. you don't just marry the woman or date the woman. You're dating her community and her culture. So and given the history of us and them, why would you dare align yourself with that if you care about us? Let me ask you a question. I want you to, I want you to let me get my yes, answers yes, out. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> hypothetically. Now, that's one of the biggest things that draws so much controversy for Umar. And you guys already know what y'all going to say. He's pretty much consistent with the conversation that was being had online. You know, I'll get into more of my thoughts on that later. For a quick summary, I will say the ladies were mostly on Umar's side, but the fellas, half of them were against him, half of them were with him. All right. But after that point, Umar had some things to say about Vanessa Bryant which further his example that many people agree with, but it seems like the person that he used rubbed people the wrong way. Shut this out right here. Kobe Bryant. Let me ask you a question. Kobe Bryant. I'm gonna ask you a question. Rest Kobe peace, Bryant died. Yeah. Vanessa inherited his wealth. Sure. And guess what? Is Vanessa Bryant using any of that black man's money to do any good in the black community? Let me ask you. Absolutely question. fucking not. We don't know Vanessa that. Bryant. Wait. Listen, I don't know. It's I'm telling you. How you Vanessa know? You know? Bryant, let me ask you a question. Well, she's a public Can figure, I ask you a question? And, and she just You did. don't know You that. didn't see that initiative. You don't know I that. do know. I do know what I'm telling you, you now. Let me ask you a question. Mr. Bryant just started an initiative with three predominantly white colleges, some sort of a sports initiative with Kobe's money and Kobe's name didn't choose a single HBCU. Let me ask you a question. With a black man's money. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. He died from taking a COVID shot. Is his white widow using any of Marvelous Marvin Hagler's fortune to help black folks? You're being unfair. I'm being unfair how? No, let me tell you why. Expecting white women to use black money to help black people? No. How is that Cause, unfair? Because because the same way you naming these people, uh -huh. we can name mad black wives that got black money from their husbands that did shit to help black people. Well, this, stop. It's difference. my goal. No, Here's it's not. We own, and you know what the difference no, is? you're wrong. You know you're what the wrong. difference is? You're wrong. You're wrong. Fuck if the, I marry a white woman, when I die, my wealth goes to the very people who have robbed everything but from hold my on, community. Hold on. True. But now let's get into some reactions. Spank Horton, the homie of Kevin Hart, says uh, the fact that black people don't understand this point of marrying outside your race is mind boggling. But some folks have different opinions, saying policing this woman's money in the name of the black community is disgusting. Her husband, her money, leave her alone. 
She don't have to care. I know a lot of 100% full-blooded niggas that don't give a damn about the progress of our community. Tired of pointed fingers, she don't have to give a damn, especially if half of us don't give a damn. Now, these folks are coming with some facts to support Vanessa Bryan. So this person says, Vanessa donated 16 million to Kobe's foundation serving underprivileged youths. Kobe didn't go, even go to college, so why is he responsible for HBCUs? Kobe was a founding member of the African American Museum, History Museum, and gave a million to that. Marvin Hagler's widow went on record saying he did not pass from the shot. And that was a three-way partnership with Nike Basketball for, for the teams to wear shoes. Dr. Umar is wrong on this one. Now, this person says y'all was loving Dr. Umar when he was policing black man's penises, but now that he spoke on Vanessa Bryant, y'all don't like him anymore. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, y'all seen the switch up on that one. Imagine the switch up on this one right here. So, this says Dr. Umar has a message for black women. Called the beautiful black woman syndrome. It's almost a curse. Okay? Agreed. Exactly. Here's what I'm saying. Number one, y'all date earlier when mm -hmm. you look good. Statistics show it. When a black woman is attractive, she's sexualized earlier. Uh -huh. She loses her virginity earlier. When you have a beautiful daughter, you got to be on her ass because uh -huh. the hounds will be. Uh -huh. But here's the point that I want to make. Because they're so beautiful, Joe, guess what? When the brothers in college was trying to holler with that wedding ring, oh, no, I look too good for that. Ain't no yeah. marriage coming my in my options, 20s. My options. Thank you. I'm then the 30s option. came. The 30s came. Brothers came with the ring. Oh, no, no, no. I'm still enjoying this. You ain't slowing me then down. Then she gets... 43, 44, 45. Now, I'll take the now she ready to no, settle down. I'll take the post office worker. <laughs> right. I'll take the but, post but office worker But stay with me. Now. And because black men are not dropping at her feet with proposals like they were in her 20s and in her 30s, now she's on YouTube talking about black men Dab ain't shit. Ain't shit. They not now. serious. Ain't they don't want to build a family. Time out. You done had about 30 black men who came for your finger in marriage and you turned them all down because you thought you was too fucking cute Big to settle down. And now you in your mid 40s, <laughs> the brothers ain't breaking their neck Late to wedge you out no, and now the men ain't no, shit. Hold up. No, no, <laughs> this one. Listen. <laughs> Wait, Mal, is that you? Mal, is that you? Oh, shit. Stay here. Not necessary. Don't save us. Not necessary. I'm piling on. I'm piling on. I'm piling on. Mal, no, no, you don't look the same. She no, said no, it's not no, no. You don't look the same. Right. Right. Well, so, not necessarily. Wait, 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 no, wait, they wait, still wait. look good. No, no, no. They still if look good. If you don't put your fucking look, computer they, they away. They still may look good. Up, you don't look the same. And not just that. That black man now has ascended to the point where he's single and he got the 30-year-olds and the 28-year-olds still checking no, for him. He 40 now. He got the pick of the litter. <laughs> that's true. He but got the, the pick of the litter that's true, now. But the other thing, too. The other thing, You're too. You're not the commodity The other no thing, more. too. When you are, you're a black man in your 40s uh -huh. and you meet a fine-ass sister in her 40s, uh -huh. it don't mean nothing wrong with her. Nope. But you have to entertain the idea. How did a woman this fine... Slip through the cracks. She damaged. Up, she got a bunch absolutely. of shit coming to the table with it. How did... So you automatically a little on defense because you like, shit, she bad as shit, never been married or no kids, never lived with a man. Like, are you psycho? Why What's wrong that? with you? Are you married but not telling Why me? Why are you not giving them a pound? <laughs> yeah. You told yeah. me to sit down. I don't know. I mean, he I'm gave me some Stand up, stand up, sister. Come on. Yeah, please, man. Queen. Please, queen. <laughs> Dap him up now, <laughs> queen. Exactly. Read your ass. Leave, leave your sister alone. Leave your sister alone. Leave my sister alone. That's right. Not too much on Mel. I want to hear her rebuttal. When he's, when he, when he started. When he started. When he started. When he There is no rebuttal. I agree with you. You don't got a rebuttal? No, I don't. Then don't rebuttal. Now, this is really interesting because a lot of times, hmm, people always said that Umar and Kevin Samuels had some of the same ideas, or they may have the same ideas, if it didn't seem like they were competing for the same audience. So, that's interesting with him saying that because it pretty, it's pretty consistent with a lot of things that older male content creators are saying on social media and things of that sort. So, I'm interested in hearing what y'all got to say in the comment section below about that, but let's continue this conversation. So some reactions for some people. This person says, I don't respect Dr. Umar for a lot of reasons, but number one might be how he's always focused on other people, telling folks how to spend their money, how to raise their kids, or who they should be in relationship with. You are not the authority on other people's lives. This guy says, Dr. Umar is the number one of the latest true black leaders that actually care and putting his life on the line for niggas. If you had a problem with him, I can't trust you. This person says, me when it comes to Dr. Umar. This is a newspaper, right? It's 90% bullshit, but it's entertaining. 
That's why I read it, because it entertains me. <laughs> Andrew Tate says this right here. I don't care if you agree with him or not. Dr. Umar is right or die for his people, and I respect that. Okay, Andrew Tate. This dude says Umar said he don't want reparations for slavery, but he wants donations. Got it. Now, this person posted him saying this right here. They want is money, and I hate to say that because it's harsh to say, but it's true. It we're so sure. addicted to money that we're ignoring how we're making ourselves look and how we're creating a situation that our children are going to suffer from if we don't start looking for justice and stop looking for but money. That's capitalism. It's the same thing with reparations. Everybody looking for money. I don't want no fucking money for slavery. No money. There's no dollar amount they can give me but to restitute me for But that. that's capitalism. Now, in response to this, this, I think this is the whole point where he's saying, he made the point that he doesn't want to continue that, that inferiority complex that a lot of black folks have with white people or the white community coming to save us. So he doesn't want that handout from white folks for the school or whatever. He wants it to be done by black folks so it can represent something that we did, we created. That's his idea as far as that. You don't have to agree with it but i'm just letting you know his full idea and that kind of makes this take disingenuous now this person also said this right here um all the pro-black stuff be a waste when you realize the community as a whole isn't serious enough to adapt that mentality you just got to do your thing and help who you can just know there will be people that won't be satisfied no matter what you do now this person responds saying the check they gave you must be all right just spreading the loser attitude that our situation is hopeless we'll never have 100 percent involvement so quit and every man for himself all the history of successful organizing regardless of race and your response is rugged individualism shaking my head now let's get to my thoughts on the situation now i think one of the main issues that people have with dr umar is the strictness that he has when it comes to his beliefs he offers very little grace in his reasoning for decisions that individuals make. Now, that attitude naturally brings pushback. But as a community, we have to ask ourselves some questions. How much do we truly care about the growth as a whole? Not as individuals, but as a whole. And if we care a lot, do we have the room to be free-spirited and careless in comparison to other minorities? Because we all acknowledge that we're far behind, you know? I hear that shit all the time. So if so, can we afford to slack in other areas that other minorities prioritize? Now, I may be wrong, but the optics and even some statistics show that other minorities are much more strict than ours when it comes to some of these issues that Dr. Umar points out. And I get it. There are some folks who want a better black community and others who are black people that just want the best options available for themselves as an individual. Now, we have one life to live, so I'm not going to focus on convincing people that my priorities are more important than theirs. Now, luckily for me, my priorities align with my taste. I prefer black women. I date a black woman. And I'm under the understanding that having a better black community casts out a wide net for better opportunities for plenty of black children. Therefore, that even serves the black people who may have an individualistic mind state. Now, I've seen how easy it is to gain resources when black people are in positions of power within my community. I've had a situation where I applied for a job out of college where a family friend held a high position in the district. In my initial assessments, they were so high that I was advised to apply for a higher position and that person ushered me into that role. And some folks, some folks were surprised that I got that job fresh out of college or off the streets, as they would say, you know, that wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the black brother that looked out for me. Now, that's the type of community that I believe in sharing resources and opportunities now a person with the individualistic mind state in my opinion would have been happy to hire me after my first application to have a super competent person at a lower rank position that i'll be paid less money you feel me not too much you know expenses on the payroll for my for my, for my output but that's just a slight example that may not resonate with some and it may with others but that's just how the dice rolls with this shit. for instance it's crazy saying all the different clips from this one interview with one day, one day, folks are cheering for Omar, and the next they're pissed off with the revolution of crazy as hell. But I don't really have a problem with that. You can love an individual, but you shouldn't blindly follow everything that person says. And if you disagree with some things, that isn't a testament of their character as a whole. But I'm going to wrap up this video right here though. And uh, let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. This is another update with Stace. 
Yo, hey though, the new year's coming up and you may be trying to get into the best shape of your life. I got you, man. I got the best weight loss fitness program that's helping me go from the body of a fat slob, a fat slob, to the physique of a Greek god. I've grown from 274 pounds to 237 within a matter of months. And listen, just go to the Slide to God website. Any purchase on there, any purchase comes with the workout program and the meal plan that I've been using. And if you have any questions, I mean anything about anything in regards to this weight loss journey, DM me on Instagram or TikTok right now at Slob to God. The link is in the description. Let's unlock our potential and go from Slob to God.